was here a couple of months ago, experienced some terrific lake trout fishing, easy lake trout fishing. Seems like nothing has changed. Just as I start trolling here, fish on, I can see it's a little lake trout there. And the last time I was here, I base camped on this lake, I actually just stayed on this lake and just enjoyed it. But I mentioned that there were some other brook trout lakes, potential brook trout lakes that I was curious about. And I'm back to explore those this time. Get my hands nice and wet. Barbless hooks already out. Oh, I got a squirmer. Come here. Okay. Just a little laker, thank you. Good start. Same lure as last time. Sparkly flicker minnow, just love it. Hopefully you can hear me better here. The wind is just pounding the mic out there. And this wind is blowing me down the lake perfectly, but it actually ruined the trip I was planning to do for the next several days. I was gonna be on Superior fishing some river mouths, but it's predicted to be five foot waves in this wind, so that's not happening. But I'm really excited about this one. I actually picked it half an hour before I left this morning. After that one got canceled, I was scrambling to figure something out. I'm excited to get in here, explore these lakes. Tailwind is intense. I'm just flying down the lake and I've got the Navionics app, which is a boating app. Also has bathymetry for quite a few lakes in Ontario and elsewhere. And I'm measuring my speed on it with easy strokes with the double blade. I'm hitting seven clicks per hour. And I'm sure I really give her, Let's see how fast I can get. Let's see if I can hit 10. Almost, 9.4, crazy speed with not much effort. <laughs> if I put up a sail, I'd be out of control. Cliffs here are extremely impressive. What a lake. I can't troll anymore. The wind is just too strong. I need all my attention on, on keeping balance in the canoe. <laughs> I'm enjoying this little ride. So I'm at the trailhead here, and the last time I tried to get in here, I bushwhacked through there, completely didn't see this trail, which is fairly overgrown. And, uh, and then on my way back, I found it, intersected it, and took it back here. So I know this trail exists, it's gonna take a little work, so I'm just gonna hike it first with a light pack and my saw, clear it, and then uh, the double carry after that. It's gonna get a lot less leisurely here on out. It's a nice sight. <sighs> Made it to the first pond with all the gear. It was about three quarters of a kilometer, half a mile. Took two and a half hours to scout clear and double carry, but making progress. And I'm hoping that there's another trail to the next lake, because that's where I want to set up a base camp for the next several nights. Throwing my line in here in this small pond, and I got hit. Intriguing. It's kind of shocking though, because at most this is 100 meters long and maybe 50 meters wide. 
and I can see bottom throughout, so. I didn't think it'd be too warm, but they're here. Getting some hits here, but they are tiny, like, I'm talking three or four inch brook trout that just had one hit there. It doesn't even bend back the rod because it's so small. But that's, yeah, it's just cool that they're here. But it's three o'clock, I wanna to get to the next lake to set up camp and have a good, nice dinner. And I have no idea how much, oh, oh, there we go, fish on, oh, it's off. <laughs> just have a little Black Fury inline spinner on now. And they're even too small for that, size one. It's the smallest one I have, but that's fine. I'm not too interested in <laughs> fish that small. Although, oh, it's on again, and it's um, it's quite beautiful. <laughs> so I'm a, I take that. Oh wow, it's this is the most beautiful four-inch brookie I've ever seen. <laughs> oh man, ah, my hat. Get you right back, buddy. One sec, please. This one could be kept actually, but uh, like I said, I got some work to do to get into this next lake. And I've got some meat to eat up tonight anyway. Okay, hooks out. Get my hands sopping wet for this beautiful little guy. It's okay. Oh my goodness. How could anything in the nature be so beautiful? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thanks for the bite, buddy. Just stunningly beautiful. Why? I always wonder in nature, why are things so beautiful? They could be ugly, they could be completely functional, but they're just incredibly beautiful. I think I might have picked up a trail. Nothing definitive yet, but uh, that's probably, yeah, that's gotta be a blaze there. Trees can just have natural wounds too, but yeah. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. Nice. Made it through, but lost the trail toward the end, so. I have to find it or figure something out. Made it into the next unnamed lake, and it was totally worth it. It was another grind. It was only about a third of the distance of the last portage, but it took almost two hours still to scout and clear and double carry. I'm eager to set up camp and get dinner going. Uh, it's looking like it's gonna be tough to find a campsite though. Shoreline here is rugged and then thick like balsam fir forest behind that, so see what I can find. Took quite a while, but got a nice site here. Building a fire pit, got these nice flat rocks. And yeah, it was a challenge to find anything workable here, but what I've got is sweet. I'll show you in a sec, but want to get dinner on, I'm ravenous. Gotta let the coals burn down. So here's a quick look. Canoe mooring there. Hammock in here, it's pretty tricky, but this works. And then a big cliff right behind me, which I'll see if I can hike up tomorrow and get a look. Very cool back here, some huge spruces. But the main reason I was pretty intent on camping here is for this view. fantastic there is another viable spot to camp over there but uh, it wouldn't have this view so yeah I'm pretty happy ketchup mustard lots of red onion jalapeno and cheddar smoky 
Mmm. Oh, this husk. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I'll give it a try. The husk was pretty dry, unfortunately. But it was at home. I figured I'd try it. Let's see. Hmm. Nah. Not the best. I'll munch on it. Yeah, it needs to be moist and fresh corn so that the, the moisture inside inside of it steams it. Not bad though. Pretty gnarly spider on my camera bag. Cliffs are nice and rosy, getting close to sunset. And I've hung everything up because there are a ton of slugs on this spot. And they crawl over everything and leave their mucus trails. So I've got everything off the ground. Canoe is up, I'm not expecting any rain, so I'm not going to flip it. And I've got the tarp half pitched for the same reason. Should be good stars tonight, there's not a cloud. And there could even be some meteor shower action tonight. So I'm looking forward to getting in here and I can't wait to fish tomorrow. Can't wait to fish this lake and hopefully have one for lunch. Gonna try to bushwhack up this little cliff this morning for a view. And right behind my camp, there's this crazy rock. It's virtually a perfect cube. It seems alien. And then there's like this right angle, almost a perfect right angle cut into it. It's just weird. Another one of those things in nature, you wonder how, how could nature produce that? Getting hit. Small. Yeah. Fish on. Let's see if it'll stay on. Might be very lightly hooked. Yep. Another tiny, tiny brookie. Beautiful. So small. Look at that. In the net. <laughs> I'm gonna let him go, thank you. Um, I'm not looking for a big spawner, but something a little bigger than that, ideally. Could piece a few of those together, but I don't know. I'd rather get something slightly bigger. Another inline spinner, a little blue flocks this time. Using this one because it casts a little farther, because it's got more weight. Uh, I was using the little Clio again, hoping for something bigger, and I could feel the, the bites, so I had to size down. I'm gonna cast as I drift with the wind down the lake and then I'll troll as I go up back into the wind and just repeat. Fish on trolling up the lake. Small crankbait. Feels pretty small but probably a little bigger than the last. Could be a keeper. It's definitely bigger. Yeah. Perfect keeper, yes. That's the one, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I just dispatched the fish. 
And now I'm going to cut its red gills there, which will allow blood to pump out and just get it out of the flesh. You can dispatch a fish that way too, but the way I think of it is if something was going to dispatch me, I'd rather just a clean blow on the head and lights out rather than slit my throat and let me bleed out. Real beauty. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Just angling my knife down the belly, just the tip of the knife, so hopefully they don't puncture the organs. Down to the anus, and then pull the head back, and then with the head come all the organs, along with some roe. That one was carrying some eggs, so I'll keep those, make use of them, eat them. Toss the remains out in the lake, and I'm doing this away from my site. Um, I try to never clean fish on my campsite just because there are lots of bears around. Just asking for trouble. And then there's all this bloody gunk in here, which I just run my thumbnail over. Comes out, rinse it up with water, and now I've got one beautiful fillet for the pan. Or not fillet, the whole uh, carcass, which is how I like to do it for a smaller trout. Just make the most use of the meat. Fillets, you lose some in the ribs and bones. Just got a new frying pan, it's GSI Pinnacle 10 inch pan. I had the Sea to Summit Alpha pan 10 inches as well, like a 10 inch pan for fish and for non and stuff like that. Anything bigger. And uh, pretty happy with this one. The other one has just started to give out, has some rubber pieces that when used over a fire over a period of years, even when being careful, just gave out. So. And the non-stick coating was coming off. So this looks quite nice. Happy with it so far. Just putting a little salmon spice on here. Not too much because I really want to taste the brook trout. A little on the skin, but on the outside it Mostly just burns. So. Oh, that's gonna be fantastic. It's a lucky pan. What a way to get christened. Fresh brook trout. Quite a lot of nutrition in the eggs. They're hit and miss. Sometimes I find them quite good. Other times a bit disgusting. So. But when I find them, I like to try to make use of them. So let's give it a try, nothing to lose. Stir it up with a little caviar appetizer. Pretty good. It's probably not cooked along the spine yet, but broke off a piece closer to the tail. It's time. Crazy good. Oh man. Mmm. Oh, it's wonderful. Good to go. And all the bones are in there, but once the meat is cooked, they just fall right off. <laughs> Man, that is truly delicious. Almost at the end. It's been exquisite. And that's all that's left. Organs are gone. There's the anal fin. Pull all the meat right off and out of there. 
It's beautiful. I've got something on my mind, and I don't see how there's any way I can get through this trip without getting it off my chest. Oh, here we go again. I'm gonna ruin a perfectly good catch and cook, some environmental speech, protect the environment, save the whales, man. It actually has nothing to do with that, sir, but thank you. No, what I wanted to say is that about half a year ago, Aaron and I watched Eurovision on Netflix. I watched it again a couple of months ago, and then just recently downloaded the soundtrack on my phone. And I am completely obsessed. Like, if I'm not playing the song, the songs from especially a couple, Double Trouble and Hometown, then they are constantly going through my head. It is borderline a sickness right now. But an amazing movie. I love Will Ferrell. I love Rachel McAdams. Canadian! And then the singer for Rachel McAdams in the movie, Molly Sandin, is like a Swedish Celine Dion. Canadian! Just had to get that off my chest. But since he brought it up, I think a limit of five brook trout per person per day is not sustainable. And if the province really wanted to maintain these fisheries, they would ban barbed hooks for catch and release anglers. Back to the lake. Just doing a little exploring around this lake. It's not a big lake, it's only 500 meters long by 100 wide. But if I can find another trail to any of the other ponds around here, then I could, I could look into that for tomorrow. Today I'm just going to enjoy this lake, but yeah, there's six other ponds, mostly smaller than this one, within about a one kilometer radius, so I'm interested, but not willing to do a pure bushwhack. Got to pick up some kind of a trail. Bit of a clearing here where I can start to bushwhack to one of these ponds, see if I pick up a trail finding the odd raspberry and I've got my bear spray handy in case the bears are looking for berries too and I just want to say thanks to Jamie Stewart tripping and trekking who sent me this little safety piece the clear white piece there I lost mine and I couldn't replace one in a timely fashion he mailed me one just out of the goodness of his heart thanks Jamie if you happen to see this Pretty nice. No way I'm getting through here with gear though, but sometimes I'm content just to see it. Doing a little more trail hunting today, the far end of the lake. But I haven't seen any other cut logs or anything like that to indicate human use. Pretty stoked for these burritos. Got them dressed up with sour cream and hot sauce already. Burrito mix, veggie burrito mix going in now. 
And some avocados here. I love this. Got the cheese and green onion melted into this already. Dang! Good eats today. Oh, I just lost him. I'm trying to turn on the camera and grab the net. Just a small little speck on. So I thought I'd go explore some other ponds, but based on yesterday's recon and some more looks with the drone, uh, it just looks like it's more trouble than it's worth considering I'm already on such a lake, you know, a small lake in the hills with brook trout. Got everything I asked for. I've got to lay eyes on this place. Got to catch and eat brook trout. I'm happy. Got a little one into the net. Maybe the smallest one yet. <laughs> Micro trout. <laughs> but gorgeous. Thanks, little buddy. Free. This lake worked out great. And it was actually such a sweet place to have the hammock. Just a fantastic view, extremely comfortable sleep in the drummer. And I could actually take the tarp off last night just because I had the Zolio here and had the confidence in the fact that it wouldn't rain. So that was nice. I cook up a big batch of chili and garlic bread, fuel up for this portage back. It's the thing about Trips like this, linear trips, however you came in, you come out the same way. But at least going down down in elevation now, mostly. And I know where the trails are and they're cleared. Not so bad. Oh, man. Just a marvel. Thank you. Well, it was a tough place to get into and pretty tough getting back out too, but totally worth it. Got my brook trout reward. I've had lots of trips in this area battling through this rugged terrain to find no fish. So I'm always happy when I get that reward. 
And on my way in, I found something that was really great, really kind of special, uh, and I'll go out with that now. Here's some really good feel-good information. I camped there on that exposed rock the last time, and if you watched that episode, you might remember me coming to this campsite. It would have looked a lot different though. There was a dilapidated shelter here, um, a tempo tent basically, with a tarp that was all ripped up and torn. There was a lot of garbage. Someone actually came in. I don't know if it was a person who created the mess or, or just someone who wanted to volunteer to clean it up. There was a big shelter here. I don't care which one of you it was. I appreciate it so much. I'm just thrilled to see this site restored. I don't know if, if they saw the video and, and felt compelled to take action or if it's just a coincidence, but whatever the case is, thank you.